Good day, everyone. Meteorologist Mark Molnar here. How is everybody doing? We have a special tropical update here as well as a severe weather update. This is to outline Franklin, which is likely to become a major hurricane over the next several days as this storm progresses towards the north. Take a look at this. So, yeah, this storm could actually have impacts in Bermuda, maybe some impacts along the U.S. East Coast. And how about Nova Scotia and Southeast Canada? We'll take a look at all the details with this storm. And the European model is back with our big piece of energy into the eastern Pacific where is that going? You guessed it. It's back to this low pressure system coming up across the western part of the Caribbean and right into the Gulf of Mexico, blowing up into what looks like a storm by August 29th, just west of Florida here. I got all the tropics and severe weather. Let's get into it. So let's start off with Franklin first, and then we'll cover the other areas, especially the Caribbean Gulf and then out here, these fish storms. Let's take a look at Franklin here. It is exiting off the coast of Hispaniola here. It is going to try to get its act back to read together here. Essentially, it's, you know, tropical storm and then eventually hurricane. Now, let's take a look at the timeline here. As we continue to put this into motion, you can see by... Uh, Thursday here into Friday. The storm does start to become much better organized, becoming a hurricane by the time of this weekend. So the 26th into the 27th. Now take a look at this. This is where I'll show you here the east coast of the United States. Here it is from, uh, let me get my pencil here, from Florida all the way up to the Carolinas and there's New England. There is Bermuda right here and Nova Scotia is right up here. Now take a look at this. We'll just kind of come down from a bird's eye view here and watch what happens with this storm as we continue to go in time it does start to intensify the good news is here look what starts to happen this east coast trough there is a low pressure system this is going to help steer this storm away from the united states now does it steer it towards canada here well let's take a look you can see it does start to move in the direction. This is by the 30th Nova Scotia. Now, don't get me wrong. There's still going to be effects along the U.S. East Coast. Lots of waves and even some stiff northeast winds here. But take a look at this. The European now taking it even further out to sea with this model run away from Nova Scotia. You're still going to get some rain and wind here and wave action, especially in the eastern part of Nova Scotia here up towards Sydney. But the good news is it keeps the center of circulation away from Nova Scotia. Unfortunately, it looks like, according to the European run, it's going to give a direct hit to Newfoundland here. So if you're in Newfoundland, that's not good news. By this time, it's becoming a massive extra tropical storm. Now, getting on to our uh, Eastern Pacific energy that eventually becomes our Caribbean low here. Take a look at this. So this is the 24th, 25th. You can see this piece of energy that ejected from the Eastern Pacific. Here it is on the 25th. So this system is going to bring a lot of heavy rain to Jamaica, the Cayman Islands. Look at this. By the 26th into the 27th, you see lots of shower and thunderstorm activity here. It is a long, drawn-out area of low pressure. Now, it's going to stall a bit from the 27th into the 28th, but look what starts to happen as that east coast trough up here takes effect right over Georgia. See how it's drawn to the north? It starts to strengthen just northeast of Cancun there and then west of Havana. It exits the Caribbean into the eastern Gulf of Mexico, and this is where the trouble starts because there is a literally bathwater here in the eastern Gulf of Mexico. So now the European model is starting to grab onto this low pressure system 144 hours out and blow this up. How strong it becomes, it's all dependent on wind shear and dry air, and we'll take a look at that analysis here momentarily. But look at that. It's showing a landfall up near between the Panhandle and the peninsula itself, and then riding it up this trough here by the September 1st and back out over the open Atlantic. So essentially, we're seeing like the storm regenerate as it heads out over the Atlantic. Now we'll take a look at some of the other storms out here. They are essentially just fish storms. Let's take a look at this. We'll get a bird's eye view here. We have a few areas out here that maintain some watching, but look at yeah, this does potentially have a chance to become a hurricane out here. This is by the 24th and 25th. But look at this. It's on its way out around that subtropical high. And we'll have another system that rides along this, but it is a very weak system and it's likely to get sheared. Another Cape Verde system that moves up like this 
just southeast of the Azores. So we're going to have successive systems here, but it looks like the ones behind Franklin here don't have much of a chance, at least at the moment. Look at I leave you here with the September 2nd. Look at this big wave coming off the coast of Africa. So let's take a look at the GFS here. We're going to compare this to the European model run. Uh, yeah, this this dots here. This is uh, what's left of Harold. Harold, I don't know why it's still showing up there, but, you know, we'll just roll with it here. Let's take a look here. We got the area of energy here into the eastern Pacific. Let's see. There it is. It's right around El Salvador here. So watch what happens here the 25th. We'll see if the GFS pulls. Yeah, it does. Look at it. Pulls that energy right across the Yucatan Peninsula here northward on the 25th. It's a little bit quicker than the European model is. But as we continue in time, what does the GFS do with it here? Well, it's kind of meandering until we get to about Cuba here on the 29th. Look at this. This is a similar vicinity here, just a tad bit to the east uh, than the European model does. And look what it does with it. Yeah, the GFS completely loses it. We do have another area of energy that exits from the Pacific here on the GFS towards September 1st that actually swings up towards South Texas again. So is it actually going to bring some more beneficial rains here towards Corpus Christi up to San Antonio? That is possible. Could we have another tropical system by the first week of September? It is possible. Now, if we take a look at Franklin here on the GFS, you can see it really well here, you know, exiting as a very minimal tropical storm. Take a look at this as we continue to go in time here. Yeah, this storm's going to really strengthen by the 24th, 25th. You can see it's actually taking on AI structure already. So it's possible this storm could outperform the performance of the model here. So take a look at that GFS swinging back much further to the east. I kind of do agree with this because, you know, that initial trough up here helps steer the system to the northeast. Once that trough lifts out, it will allow this high pressure to build in behind it, which pushes and shoves the storm back towards the west with that left turn towards the U.S. East Coast. Now, not all the way, because as you can see, the GFS is a bit further to the east on guidance. What does this mean for Bermuda? Wow, look at this. It's going to come pretty close here on the GFS. European is a little bit further to the west. Here is Bermuda. We're going to watch this situation here because this could be a problem. It, you know, 100 or 200 miles makes all the difference in the world here for Bermuda. But here's the U.S. East Coast. You can see GFS safely exiting it away from even Nova Scotia. This is great. We're going to have to keep an eye on these trends. Still think there's going to be some effects, especially along the coast. But look at Newfoundland seems to be the popular spot for a landfall for this storm. So we're definitely going to keep an eye on it here. And these other systems out here, you know, by the first week of September. Yeah, we could actually see some pretty big tropical waves out here continuing to try to develop. This one looks really promising by September 4th. I do caution you, this is very far out on our time scale, but I do like to show this just to get a good idea of some trends here. Now, if we take a look at Franklin here on the GFS, you can see it really well here, you know, exiting as a very minimal tropical storm. Take a look at this as we continue to go in time here. Yeah, this storm's going to really strengthen by the 24th, 25th. You can see it's actually taking on AI structure already. So it's possible this storm could outperform the performance of the model here. So take a look at that GFS swinging back much further to the east. I kind of do agree with this because, you know, that initial trough up here helps steer the system to the northeast. Once that trough lifts out, it will allow this high pressure to build in behind it, which pushes and shoves the storm back towards the west with that left turn towards the U.S. East Coast. Now, not all the way, because as you can see, the GFS is a bit further to the east on guidance. What does this mean for Bermuda? Wow, look at this. It's going to come pretty close here on the GFS. European is a little bit further to the west. Here is Bermuda. We're going to watch this situation here because this could be a problem. It, you know, 100 or 200 miles makes all the difference in the world here for Bermuda. But here's the U.S. East Coast. You can see GFS safely exiting it away from even Nova Scotia. This is great. We're going to have to keep an eye on these trends. Still think there's going to be some effects, especially along the coast. But look at Newfoundland seems to be the popular spot for a landfall for this storm. So we're definitely going to keep an eye on it here. And these other systems out here, you know, by the first week of September. Yeah, 
we could actually see some pretty big tropical waves out here continuing to try to develop. This one looks really promising by September 4th. I do caution you, this is very far out on our time scale, but I do like to show this just to get a good idea of some trends here. So dry air analysis, thanks to tropical tidbits here. Here, Franklin is overcoming that dry air, essentially bringing up all this moist air, especially into the Caribbean. Our Pacific system slowly crossing over into the Caribbean as well. You can see dry air being scoured out to the northwest of Franklin. And look at this, the MDR of the Atlantic is moistening up as well. Now, here's our system. You can see it initializing here into the Western Caribbean. As we continue to go towards the 28th into the 29th, you see Franklin becoming, oh, 975 millibars. Here is that system in the Eastern Gulf. I am very concerned at this point because look at that, 983 millibars just in line with Tampa here. I am very concerned about this. So you might want to start thinking about a uh, what you would do if this storm were to materialize. So have a plan in place. You know, it's not set in stone yet, but the fact that this trend is back here on the European model says a lot. 981 millibars here by the 30th, 972 here on our Franklin, 966. So this, as these storms head away from into the northeast Atlantic or northwest Atlantic for that matter, they tend to strengthen, especially if they get away from the effects of El Nino. Look at that. We got another hurricane out here by the Cape Verde Islands by August 31st. And then as we head out, look at our system re-strengthening as it heads from the Gulf inland back out over the Atlantic, but it is fighting a lot of dry air to the northwest and a big old plume of dust ejects from Africa here, and that's where you're starting to see mid-layer dust again inhibiting development. And the Caribbean here, rainfall amounts, you can see pretty much dry through the Cayman Islands as we head through Friday as well, Jamaica. There's what's left of Franklin over Hispaniola. Most of that has already fallen. But take a look at this as we continue to go in time. There's our tropical wave coming out of the Pacific into the Western Caribbean. Yeah, the Cayman Islands are going to get dumped on 100 to 150, close to 200 millimeters of rainfall. That is going to essentially translate to a solid 4 to 10 inches of rain. Jamaica, look at that. You do start to get close to that 100 millimeters, 3.5, 4 inches. Watch out. Look at that. That has it going right up towards Florida. And rainfall amounts here in the Lesser Antilles. It looks pretty dry until Sunday. That little wave that comes in, not expected to be too much. Uh, maybe amount to 40 to 60 millimeters here. That's going to be about, you know, one and a half, two and a half inches of rainfall. Now, I wanted to show you this area here in the eastern Pacific. It has a very good chance, 80% chance through day seven here. Now, let's take a look as we put this into motion. Here it is developing off the coast around the 25th, just south of Acapulco. It is going to intensify very rapidly here, and it's likely to make landfall pretty quick. Let's just zoom in here, west of Acapulco. So it's probably, at this stage of the game, not going to become very strong. Landfall somewhere in here. And that would be a better scenario instead of moving up towards the northwest and re-strengthening. And as we head to the western Pacific, here is Tropical Depression number 8. This storm could actually become a tropical storm and move up towards the island of Japan. So here it is as we continue in time, you know, head up towards the 26th, 27th. You can see it riding up here just east of Japan. So it, right now, this area of high pressure out here. It looks like this is going to be steered around the bend of this high, and then this trough kicking into the west should help push the storm out. Now, we have Tropical Depression number 9 out here in the western Pacific. This is just north of the Philippines. This thing's going to meander because the steering currents are very weak out here in this section of the western Pacific, and we're going to have to watch this because this could actually become a typhoon. Might it actually come south? Look at this. This is towards the 27th, 100 mile per hour. 115. So this actually starts to recurve a bit towards days 5, 6, and 7. Could it actually come up back towards the southern islands of Japan? That is a possibility. So for some severe weather update here, I want to take a look at our future radar here, uh, especially covering the eastern Great Lake region as we head through the evening, 10 p.m. and beyond. Take a look at these stronger showers and thunderstorms. We had a lot of stormy activity happen unexpectedly here around a lot of Ohio fairly early. That's going to regenerate overnight after midnight. Look at some of these storms. This is quite a system here. It could pack a punch with damaging wind, large hail, 
And the biggest problem is going to be that very heavy rain. You've already seen some very heavy rain during the day and the evening hours on Wednesday. But this is quite a line, and look where it starts to going to redevelop here, backbuild, essentially, right over eastern Michigan and Lake Erie. And that's going to continue in time here. Let's take a look and see exactly what's going to happen. Yeah, this is 5 a.m., 6 a.m. You're in the thick of it here in Cleveland. Things are going to get nasty here, just downright nasty. Look at this. And rainfall rates are going to be phenomenal. So I'm going to go over those rainfall rates and amounts momentarily here. By 9 a.m., we're starting to move this mesoscale convective complex towards the south, and we get a little bit of cloudiness and some showers up here into parts of upstate New York, into northeastern and eastern Pennsylvania, the Finger Lakes, uh, Hudson Valley, Catskills. So watch out for that. It looks to be a rainy day for the northeast for your Thursday. So, yeah, you definitely, I don't know if you all need the rain, but some of you probably do. Take a look at that. By the evening hours, it gets a bit heavier, and some of these complexes really start to develop. Don't be surprised if you get a few warnings with damaging wind, large hail, but look at by 11 p.m. Thursday evening. We're back at it here in Cleveland, Youngstown, up north of Toledo, Detroit area. Watch out because look at this. It is going to converge on western New York, western Pennsylvania as we go into Thursday night into the very early morning hours of Friday. And that dives south towards Pittsburgh and Harrisburg, Williamsport, until we get to the morning hours of Friday. And we start to try to clear it out, but here's the frontal boundary. You can see some showers and thunderstorms even here into parts of eastern New England. So European model run for rainfall amounts. Here it is. This is just through Thursday afternoon. Look at this. This is a solid one to two inch plus, maybe locally higher to three to four amounts here into extreme northeast Ohio, northwest Pennsylvania, western New York. And then look at this as we head on into the rest of your week. Yeah, it's going to add up here into parts of New England. But yeah, this is the area of concern, that severe weather area and flash flooding area, Cleveland, Erie, uh, Dunkirk, Buffalo, Toledo. Detroit. Please stay vigilant here. Pittsburgh as well. I am proud to announce that I am now an affiliate with Trilogy Maps. TrilogyMaps.com bringing you the most digital, customizable maps found nowhere else on the internet. These maps are simply stunning. It's an advanced layering system that makes these maps great for making forecast maps with ease or any other maps that you would like to display important information on. The resolution on these maps is simply amazing. From the detail of everything here in the States, and you can also create stunning digital professional layered maps from also across the entire world. And don't forget in checkout, the discount code option, use my code, MediaMark, hit apply, and you will get 20% off your order. So if you want the most professional, customizable, and affordable weather maps found nowhere else on the internet, look no further than TrilogyMaps.com. Link in the description down below along with your discount code. As always, thanks for joining me for this edition of MediaMark's Weather. Take a look at my Facebook page at MediaMark, also Weather Northeastern, also Hurricane Northeastern to follow the tropics. And if you want to hop over to my Twitter page, it's at WeatherEastern. It's MediaMark.com. Thanks for joining me question or comment down below subscribe if you haven't already hit that bell notification button so you're alerted when a video comes out